Good morning, and welcome to our joy and worship service. We are the Fellowship of the Inner Light, an interfaith church located in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and founded by the late Paul Solomon. My name is Sarah Anderson, and I'm one of several pastors here at the Fellowship. We're very happy to be able to be here this morning to offer you words of inspiration during our service today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in an opening prayer. Creator, source of our being, we take a moment now to invite your loving presence into this service. Lift our hearts and minds to the awareness of the oneness of all life. Each breath we take, we are lifted closer to you. Fill us with your love that with open hearts we might feel the Christ presence. Let the spirit of love move through us in blessings today. We set our intention at this time to be open to the Christ's love and express that love to those around us. Amen. We will now hear the great invocation. The great invocation, the words were written by Alice Bailey back in 1945. And back at that time, she used the word man to indicate all humankind. And the music was written by her own Chris Van Cleve. And we'll have the words here that you can sing along. hearing that. 
We have a few announcements at this time. We have an ongoing prayer healing experience on Thursdays at 3 o'clock. If you like more information about it, or if you have a name you'd like us to pray for, please uh, contact this fellowship center. And the Paul Solomon Reading Study Group is on the first Monday of the month, so that'll be a week from tomorrow. And again, if you want more information, contact the fellowship. Our speaker for next week is Bruce Shelton. That's May 2nd. Now for the inspirational reading, we thank Susan Thomas for bringing these to us. And these are quotes about living in the spirit. This first quote is by Swami Vivekanand. You have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you. None can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. This next one, the spiritual life does not remove us from the world, but leads us deeper into it. And this is Henry Nowen. This next one is a Rumi quote. Step out of the circle of time and into the circle of love. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Pierre de Chardin. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. The Dalai Lama. And this last one is a quote from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. It is not the end of the physical body that should worry us. Rather, our concern must be to live while we're alive, to release our inner selves from the spiritual death that comes with living behind a facade designed to conform to external definitions of who and what we are. Very good. Seed thoughts. And now this is our invitation to give. We thank you for your support to the Fellowship Center and we, we appreciate all contributions and donations. Thank you to those who continue to give so this church can keep these services available to all of us. Now let us say the offertory blessing together in the plural. Divine love through us blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. Thank you. Amen. We are grateful for all the donations, and there are several ways you can donate to the fellowship. One is to go to our website and select the donation button, and the other is to mail a check to, to 640, 620 14th Street, Virginia Beach, 23451. I invite you to prepare for meditation now. We're going to take a few moments to just go within. Just let go of the day's activities and be here in the now. And we can relax by using the breath. With each breath, our body can feel a sense of relaxation letting go of what's around us and move our attention inwards. Let us bring our mind to the breath and follow the breath inside. Begin to feel a shift, a relaxing, a warmth, a sense of peace as we let go and sink deeper within. And as we open our hearts, a spirit of love fills us. The love of the presence fills us and surrounds us. 
and expands with each breath. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to pray and feel your presence, to experience your love, to pause for a moment in our busy day, to acknowledge that you are always with us. We open our hearts that we might feel your love, your peace, your presence. And now just be still. If your mind wanders, just focus back on your breath. Just be in the stillness. Gently bring your mind back if it wanders. Just focus on the breath. The breath. Follow it in within. Feel the letting go, the relaxing. Follow the breath into the heart and feel the love in the heart expand. Allow that love to fill your entire body. Going beyond the body surrounding you, relaxing you, feeling the love. And we take time now to bring to mind someone that you would like to pray for. See their face, hear their name, and send love, be it to friends or family. those people that you're around during the day. Send love. And as you send out love, being that conduit of love, you are filled with even more love. We send out our love and healing to the world and pray for world peace, seeing the earth surrounded in love and healing energies. We focus again upon the love in our hearts and send this love throughout our entire body, bringing love, healing light down through the head, through our neck, down the shoulders, through the arms and out the fingers, bringing love and healing through our bodies, bringing balance down through the trunk of our bodies, through all the systems of the body feeling love and healing and relaxation through the hips and the legs, through the knees, down through the feet and into the earth, to ground into the earth. Now take several breaths. Begin to wiggle your toes and your fingers, bring a smile to your eyes and share that Smile with others. Thank you, Lord, for this experience. Amen.
Our music today is given to us by John Philip. Beautiful. Our speaker today is Reverend Dick Dingus, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dick. Dick uh, serves in so many capacities. He's um, one of the pastors of this fellowship center. He's active on our pastoral council and in the past have served on the board of directors. Dick does so many things to assist the community and the church. He's worked as a hospice chaplain, and he's raising his grandchildren, and he has a fantastic garden. Last week, I had the pleasure of uh, having a tour, um, meeting with uh, Dick in his garden, and just uh, so peaceful. He does tours, so just give him a call, and he, he would welcome to you to come and enjoy his garden. Um, 
What I love most about Dick is when he speaks of healing and of God and spirit. Many times it's during worship service, Dick would lead our healing services, and these were so heartfelt to our fellowship community. And I'm just hoping that soon we can get back to having healing services. So now, let us invite Dick up to the podium. Uh, good morning. Uh, healing services were approved, I believe, quarterly by the, one of our pastoral council meetings. So we should be having another one in the near future. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about what, a make, what makes America great. Last Sunday morning, I was eating a pecan cake on my deck overlooking my organic garden, and the sun was shining on another beautiful morning in Virginia Beach. Now, beyond my yard is the playground of the Lynn Haven Middle School, and some people were flying model airplanes. I heard and then saw two planes flying through the air. Seeing this always amazes me because while the world's greatest experts failed for centuries to create a flying machine, now it's a children's toy. You've probably seen the films of the failed attempts. I especially remember the one that was like an umbrella on a butter churn. It simply bounced up and down. And you've probably visited Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills. The shack in which Orville and Wilbur Wright worked is still standing there. And you may have paced off the distances of those first flights. As it happened, once you know how to do something, then the process can be improved and the product refined. It can be mass produced. You and I are the beneficiaries of such inventions and advancements in every field. Communication, transportation, medical and dental care, food production, food distribution and preservation. We enjoy the benefit of labor-saving devices. We have access to the world's greatest music and literature. We can thank persons such as Ben Franklin, who created the, first, the world's first free lending library. The other day, I bought in a thrift store a collection of the world's greatest poetry in one volume. It's designed to be read one poem for each day of the calendar year. With each poem is a commentary. My girlfriend and I are keeping up with the daily readings. Centuries ago, one could only hear classical chamber music if invited to the feudal lord's castle. Now you can own a library of the world's greatest music and listen anytime. You don't even have to own any music. You can listen on YouTube or on the internet. We are so fortunate. The quality of our lives is greater than that of royalty of centuries past. How did this happen? Individuals invented, created, improved, and marketed every innovation. Today, the connections exist so that there is little time between creation and mass production and availability. Today, individuals from every level of society are free to have the opportunity to create something new. And virtually all of us have the freedom and the means to access all of it. What makes America great is this freedom and the experience of enjoying the collective influence of everyone from all fields. Every day, someone is creating something that will make a brighter future for all of us. When you think of it, this development on earth is strikingly similar to the way things are in heaven. In heaven, everyone shares universal mind. On earth, we have the internet. In heaven, all you have to do is think of what you want, and you get it instantaneously. On earth, almost everything is available, 
It just takes time to get it. If it's too expensive to buy at the superstore, then just wait and you'll find it in a garage sale or at a thrift store. When I was the pastor at Lynn Haven Colony Congregational Church, I got the approval of the deacons to have an essay contest for middle school students. The contest was to write an essay on what makes America great. And one Sunday morning, we awarded $100 to the winner. She was a young lady, a middle school student. Her home church was First Baptist. But I invited her to our church on this particular Sunday morning because she was the winner, and she came with her family. In her essay, she best described what I had in mind about what makes America great. You can change the world. Do something in your field that hasn't been done before, something that could benefit everyone. It might be your song, your poem, your act of kindness going viral on the internet, your edition of a new book, your orphanage, or the nonprofit organization you will establish. Let your light shine, and then you'll be famous, and you'll help a lot of people. Helping a lot of people is what Jesus told Don Nichols when he appeared to him in his near-death experience. And I've asked Don to be here this morning to tell his story. Won't you come up to the podium, Don? Thank you, Dick. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, from the time I was a teenager, I had a, an urge to know whether religion was real or not, and whether or not Christ was real in particular, because there were so many controversies about whether religion was real or not. And uh, <clears throat> when I was 33 years old, I was privileged to experience the truth. In 1985, on St. Patrick's Day, my late wife and I were riding our Harley, when we were hit by a car and the gas tank exploded and we were doused in gasoline. When the sparks ignited it, there was a giant fireball and she lived for one hour. I was pronounced dead on the scene by a doctor that was behind us in a, his car and they didn't send an ambulance for me, they just sent one for her. I was going to the morgue just as the ambulance for her was pulling off, one of my friends that was giving me biker CPR, that's where they beat on you and holler at you, managed to get me to open my eyes and they stopped that ambulance and threw me on the floor. I spent two days in the hospital in New Orleans and then I was flown to Galveston, Texas where I spent seven months in a burn unit. <clears throat> The pain from those burns was so horrific. My prayer each morning was, Jesus, let me die. Let me out of this body. I would do anything I could to get out of that body. I would practice transcendental meditation where I would leave my body and go up into the heavens, into the stars. I would go home and lay in my bed back home. And finally, after about five months, I woke up one morning floating on the ceiling and looking down at this monstrous body in this bed surrounded by doctors. As the doctors left the room, the last one stopped to speak to someone. And when she turned around, I realized that was my mother. And then I realized that body down there was me. And here I am floating on the ceiling <clears throat> and I had no pain, and I was so happy to have no pain. And I re finally, my prayers had been answered. I could die and get out of this body. <clears throat> my mother and the doctor left the room, and as I floated on the ceiling by myself, saying, okay, this is an occasion. This must be something I should do to mark this special occasion. 
And I said my prayers. I thanked Christ for taking me out of that body and uh, prayed for my mother and siblings. And nothing happened. And I got impatient. And I said, what's going to happen? And something must happen. And something told me to look up. And when I did, a tunnel opened up in the ceiling of the room. And I was drawn up into it like a magnet. And then at the, the end of the tunnel was a bright blue sky and a sun so bright you couldn't look at it. <clears throat> and halfway up that tunnel I was stopped and there were three beings in, in robes that looked like monks. They were silver robes with gold sashes and I told them I was so happy to be dead and out of that body, looking forward to going on a new adventure. And they said, you're not dead, Don, and you're not going to die. I was angry. I said, what do you mean I'm not going to die? I'm up here in this tunnel talking to you. My body's down there. I'm dead. Don't you know anything? <laughs> they said, no, Don, you're not dead and you're not going to die. I said, no, no, don't tell me that. I'm not going back in that body. You can't make me go back in that body. I have free will, and I'm experiencing it right now. I'm not going back, and you can't make me. And they laughed, and they thought that uh, that was funny, and I got angry. The more they laughed, the angrier I got. Finally, I told them, I'm not going back in that body, and if you want me to go back in that body, you bring Christ here, and you have Christ tell me to go back in that body, because that's the only way I'm going. And in that instant, Christ appeared, and he looked just like I expected him to look. And uh, I fell at his feet, and tears, my tears dropped on his toes. His love was so strong and so overwhelming, it was almost unbearable. And he reached down and touched my shoulder and said, be still, Don, arise. And as I stood up, all of that emotion left out of me and I was at peace. And he said, you agreed that this would happen, don't you remember? And I said, no, I don't remember that. And he, he said, come see. And he took me on a journey back to what looked like the Holy Lands and we were walking up a path with a multitude of people behind us. And apparently that was when I agreed that this would happen. And he brought me back into the tunnel again. And he said, now you see, this was supposed to happen. I said, yeah, well, that's good, but I, let, I changed my mind. <laughs> I don't want to go back in that body. That body hurts. He said, well, you don't have to, but if you would go back, you could help a lot of people. Well, I not one that could tell Christ no. I said, okay, I'll go back, but if you want me to live, you're going to have to make me live because I can't do anymore. I'm exhausted. He laughed. He said, I created you. I can make you live. When I returned to my body, I slept through the night, and in the morning... The head of the hospital and the head of the hospital across the street, the Shriners Burn Unit for Children, was my doctor. He wanted to know how it was that the night before, my body chemistry was so bad they couldn't get the results off of the machine. And this morning, they were just a tad away from being perfectly normal. And I shared my story with him, and he believed me. And uh, for another month or two that it took me to recover, I would see my astral body in the basement of the hospital and little golden fairies and uh, such would sprinkle gold dust on my astral body. It was amazing. And one day, a uh, nurse asked me, why did I think this happened? And I said, well, I don't know, maybe because I have a big mouth and I'll share the story. 
And I said, well, in reality, I think it's because I wanted to know. I wanted to know the truth. And I found it out. And it is real, and Christ is real, and the afterlife is real. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for sharing your story. I love to hear it every time. And the theme is you can help a lot of people. And we hope and expect that you just did help a lot of people who are wondering, is there life beyond? And all the things that you talked about. So I'm asking everybody to let your own light shine. Do what you can to make the world a better place. You may wonder how you can change the world, but I tell you that you're already doing it every day. My studies in the field of near-death experience inform me that each of us is a point of conscious, creative energy, and that our choices of thoughts and words and actions radiate to impact the universe ad infinitum. Near-death experiencers call it the ripple effect. The ripple effect is part of what Rene Jorgensen learned in his life review in his near-death experience. He saw an incident that he had forgotten. He was in elementary school. He teased a girl relentlessly during a playground break. She pleaded for him to stop, but he continued. This changed the girl's life. In his life review, Jorgensen felt the ripples of pain that the girl felt while she was being teased and that her parents felt when they were disappointed that she didn't turn out the way they expected. And the ripples continued to extend beyond them. This is presented in chapter 7 of the book, Love the Person You're With by David Sunfellow. You can access it on the internet. Chapter 7. There's a video of him speaking, and he tells all the details. Now, your impact on everything around you may not be apparent right now, but it is being recorded in the Akasha, the name given to the universal records. And all will be revealed to you in your life review. You will experience it from every point of view. So, plan your life to exert a positive influence in every relationship. Use the internet and social media to raise people's spirits. Wish people a happy birthday. Share beauty in pictures and words. What inspires you will inspire someone else. Tend a garden. Give the extra to your neighbors and friends. Take a chance to share something personal. You may get an occasional negative response, but let love overcome fear. Move ahead with the intention to be a positive influence. Just follow what you love in life and share it with others. Edgar Cayce said, service is asked of everyone, and grace doth more greatly abound to those who simply extend love to everyone they encounter from day to day. Beyond this, if you are really lucky, you will find somebody to love. People search for a loving relationship. To have such a relationship, you have to choose to love somebody. Find somebody to love. Do you need somebody to love? Do you want somebody to love? Then find somebody to love. Loving someone doesn't depend on the other person. It depends on you, on your capacity to love and your choice to do it. On the receiving end, however, this means that you have been if you have been rejected, then the one you thought was a lover did not have the capacity to love or made a different choice. You may have been rejected, but you are still a beautiful being of light 
created in the image and likeness of God, who is the love light. And the love light is the way Bill Taylor describes God from his near-death experience. Those who extend love will find fullness of life. We are all channels of chi energy, source energy, which is love. As you allow as you allow the energy of love to flow through you to others, you will resonate with God, who is the source, and you will be energized and healed. If your passion leads you to follow the course of love, you will also likely not have an easy life. You may feel the need to act contrary to what is accepted in your culture. You may befriend people whom others see as having no value. You may speak out or even march for unpopular causes. If your passion leads you to act contrary to what is accepted in your culture, then you may suffer for it. But later generations will recognize the rightness of your message, and you will be on the right side of history. Eventually, people will accept the influence of your actions and will change the course of society for the benefit of all concerned. What makes America great? You do, I do, we do together at Fellowship of the Inner Light. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. So please join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Spirit of the Christ, watch over us, inspire us in ways that we can be of service to others in these challenging times. Help us to remember that you are ever close and love us. Amen. Thank you, and we'll see you next Sunday at 11. <laughs>